Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, June 18. Murder figures for the first half of this year are significantly lower than they were three years ago when well over 800 persons were killed between January and June. National Security Minister Peter Bunting says between January 1 and June 15 this year, there was a 40% reduction in the number of murders compared to the same period in 2010. Minister Bunting was making a presentation to the Jamaica Diaspora Conference now underway in Montego Bay. Andrea Chisholm has more on the crime-fighting initiatives. The National Security Minister is optimistic about the recent crime statistics. The 40% reduction in murders, though not ideal, has proven that crime-fighting strategies are bearing fruit. And what it shows is that there is hope. We have made progress and we're going to continue. We're determined to continue to make progress. Police Commissioner Owen Ellington attributed the decrease to a number of initiatives. That has been achieved because of the very decisive move taken against gangs and organized crime by the security forces and the political executive. And the crime-fighting measures will be further strengthened when the anti-gang and DNA legislation are approved. Both pieces of legislation are expected to be tabled in Parliament next week. The technological capacity of the security forces will also be strengthened and over 1,000 police officers will be recruited and trained this year. The number of participants in the Citizen Security and Justice Program CSJP will also increase. So the government is urging all well-thinking Jamaicans to partner with the security forces to strengthen crime-fighting efforts. With entities like the Major Organized Crime and Anti-Corruption Task Force, appropriate social intervention programs and legislation, Jamaica will continue to reap positive results. Reporting from the Jamaica Diaspora Conference in Montego Bay, I'm Andrea Chisholm for GIS News. Government will be selecting the preferred bidder for the Caymanas Economic Zone in a matter of weeks. The announcement was made by Chairman of the Logistics Hub Task Force, Dr. Eric Deans, at the 5th Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference, now underway at the Montego Bay Convention Center. A request for proposals was issued in December last year for a joint venture agreement on the project. The Caymanas Economic Zone is central to the Jamaica Logistics Hub Initiative as it will cater to ICT, manufacturing and agro-processing sectors. Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Anthony Hilton updated the diaspora on government's plans, saying a number of sectors would benefit. The Logistic Hub will further enhance Jamaica's attractiveness to manufacturers by offering quick conversion cycle and low-cost customized delivery options to nearshore markets and will provide a robust and highly competitive platform that is unmatched anywhere in the region. Meanwhile, government is asserting that both foreign and domestic investors are given the same incentives when doing business in Jamaica. State Minister of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining Julian Robinson made the assertion during a session at the Jamaica Diaspora Conference. The free zone style incentives are geared to persons who are in the export of a good or a service. That's the principal determinant, whether you are originally from here or you're originally from abroad. Minister Robinson added that Jamaica's location, as well as the island's official language, English, positioned the country as a fertile ground for ICT investments. 26 residents of the Vaughan's Field community in the hills of St. James are now official landowners. The residents were given security of tenure during a special titling ceremony at the Maroon Town Community Center. When the 31st of March 2014 comes, this government will have issued over 5,000 titles to the people of this country. This is what we are going to do to help to empower you so you will work with us as partners to build this economy, to empower yourselves, empower your community, empower this country. And finally, the National Blood Transfusion Service NBTS's blood collection drive got a welcomed boost with the donation of a bus from the National Health Fund. The 15-seater bus will be used to transport voluntary blood donors and NBTS personnel and was handed over during Friday's celebration of World Blood Donor Day. Jamaica was selected this year to host the launch of World Blood Donor Day for the entire Americas region. During the ceremony at Emancipation Park, NBTS poster competition winners were also presented with prizes. The activities were aimed at increasing awareness of the need for safe blood and blood products and to thank voluntary unpaid blood donors for their life-saving gifts. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching.